All right, and welcome, guys, to the next live stream of the state of Minnesota. In the last live stream, basically, we were elected as the governor of the state of Minnesota. So today, we are going to be getting right back into it. We are Gabe Vogel. We are 29 years old, and we are already the governor of a state. This is the youngest I have ever been able to actually... Um, Oh yeah, it's another Jake. Holy crap! Um, this is the youngest I've actually been able to uh, get someone to be governor of, of a state, and uh, I think usually you're supposed to be at least 30, 35 to be a governor. Um, wait, is that even legal? Let's uh, let's check on the uh, the gubernatorial race, uh, gubernatorial uh, age. It's Minnesota, and we're going to be talking about, um, oh, the governor of Minnesota must be at least 25 years old, so we, yes, we are within um, the, constitu the constitution of the state of Minnesota, um, Minnesota in this here. Ah, stop. <clears throat> uh, my record for youngest success was House Majority Leader at 34. The game ignores all age limits, though that's sad. Yeah, I mean, I get why it, um ignores the age limits but at the same time um it's i usually like to be within uh, the constitution and within legality um so it's really cool we got an approval rating of 64 percent and that's the trend uh we have the highest in uh, our school board district for some reason um one hundred thirty-five thousand dollars with five hundred and eight thousand in his savings um what is our I guess it doesn't show like what we're making on a campaign right now. Just get out of college and you can be governor. Hey, what's going on, Damien? Welcome to the live stream. And uh, so today, everyone, we are going to be talking about something extremely important. And I know a lot of you guys, I don't know if you guys are worried about COVID-19 or if it's just, <clears throat> or if it's just, you know, it's like the differences of what's going to be going on in the next couple of weeks or months. Um, so, basically, the past couple of days have just been constant, non-stop uh, news about COVID. And COVID is starting to spread to a um, to the populace of the United States. Prom proposes giving... Whoa! Mitt Romney proposes giving $1,000 to every American adult as coronavirus response measure. Yikes. There's a deal now, but... Um, so basically, the past couple of days have just constant be constantly been, um... Yes... Let me go ahead and mod you, Ants. There you go. Um, but yeah, like, basically, um, it's just been constant, constant, you know, COVID-19, COVID-19, COVID-19. So, basically, um, the stock market crashed 3,000 points today. It is the largest single crash in its history, and it's even worse than the crashes that it suffered during the 2008 crisis. Um, and then we have an op-ed that is saying, forget 2008, the stock market sell-off is 2001 all over again. Um, and yeah, we had the, the Dow Jones crash 10%, um, the NASDAQ, crashed 800 points and an s p 500 crashed 279 points so there is a lot going on um it is not the worst crash in history the great depression was much worse well the difference between right between uh, the crash of 2008 um and the crash of 1929 was because the the um the crash of 1921 um those that depression had an effect much far reaching uh than you know what's going on right now so what we're going through right now is about maybe half of what 1929 was the reason why 1929 was so bad about it is that the um economic um the economic uh crash was felt throughout an entire decade so that's why a lot of times, like, you hear about, you know, all these, yeah, I'm gone in funds, so that's them gone. We're going to be down below 20,000 on the Dow since the first week of the Trump administration. 
Yes. Um, wow. This is just getting so bad. And what I'm really trying to, what I'm really wanting to say, um, let's go ahead and increase the vehicle registration fee. Um, and this is going to give more, um, revenue over to the localities. It's going to be $60. What is this, HR7? That's my bill. So now it just someone put an amendment on it for it to go down to 53. But yeah. Um, <clears throat> basically, what I'm trying to really talk about is... My throat's starting to get sore. Ooh, what do I have? Um, a lot of the things that have been going on, it is a lot. Of, what I'm noticing is a lot of people really, really do not want to... Um, <clears throat> God, what, what, a lot of people really, really don't want to take this thing seriously. So you have a couple of different types of people. You have people that are basically looking at it and they're saying, oh, well, you know, this is, um, you know, this is normal. It's just like the flu. Everyone's saying that it's just like the flu. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna like, um, worry about it. And then you have the other people that are like, you know, panic buying. They're buying out all the stores. Um, <laughs> has coronavirus, Ebola, and meningitis. Oh my God, shut up. Um, he had a lot of money invested in the stocks and lost $20,000. Wow, I'm so sorry, Knox. Um, and as if, like, you know, having the coronavirus isn't enough. By the way, everyone watching right now, go ahead and leave a like on this video just so I can... Uh, um, you know, I have 12 people watching, I only have one like, so please go ahead and get the likes up, um, if you can. Um, but anyway, yeah, so basically, you have a lot of, you have, like, um, three different types of people, you know, you have panic buyers, you have people that just don't care about other people, and then you have people that aren't taking this seriously at all. And what I really want to hammer down is, like, how in the world are people not taking this seriously? And, you know, I'm not trying to say you need to freak out about this, um... But at the same time, we really, really need to see that, and oh, this is actually going to get our Senate election up, um, just so we can get our senators back to take control. Um, it's better to overreact than to underreact. See, I'm not even trying to say overreact, because overreacting doesn't help at all. You do not have enough. Whatever. All right. Um... Vehicle registration tax to $52. Damn it. Help pay for local road projects. Yep. That's really what I'm trying to do. Let's go ahead and try to get that over to 55 sometime soon. Um, but yeah, the president called it a media hoax, so his cult is already running off the cliff. So that's my take at least um, to getting tested for the virus since my grandfather has it and I'm quarantining myself for three weeks. Oh my god. Senate candidates. Alonzo Dominguez. Very liberal, but social conservatively. That's going to be our our ticket? That's funny. I think a presidential nominee has a good chance of winning. Are we in a 20? Yep, we are in a presidential election. Society should be quarantining itself through social distancing for some time, at least until further notice. It is a public health crisis. And yeah, see... You know, I'm still kind of going out. I'm still kind of like, you know, doing whatever. I'm really kind of trying to minimize my, um, where I'm going. I'm not trying to go anywhere, you know, like big. Um, but it's getting to a point, you know, you're starting to see a lot of things happen. And, you know, if, if you haven't, in my, in my opinion, I really do suggest that, like, you know, if you haven't gotten supplies now, go get supplies. Um, it's gonna get, it's gonna get even worse than what we're looking at right now. It's, it's going to have a very far-reaching effect. And a lot of people are worried about the economy, a lot of people, and I, it really, um... I'm got worried about St. Patrick's Day tomorrow. There are a lot of people, a lot of morons out there. No, I mean, I mean, in my where I live, um, they canceled uh, St. Patrick's Day, and a lot of bars are probably even going to close too, um, because you know, there's <clears throat> they're trying not to take a chance with this. Uh, State Senator, Mrs. Minnesota, fifty-seven. Um, do we have any? 
state senate candidates okay so here's minnesota 24 loves someone can if someone can remember that then um, i want to check on minnesota 24 let's see if we can actually start flipping a couple of these districts because minnesota 24 then 24 24 24 yep we have a republican in there i believe Trump today is making new regulations saying there can't be events with 10, 10 or more people. I don't even think it's a it's a regulation. It's that's just a policy. That's him saying, hey, don't meet up with more than 24 more than 10 people. Um, use your proteges. I don't get how they work. Um, well, it's actually way too late for me to actually put a protege into the race. Um, so I would have to wait until the next um, until 2026. So we're really just going to be getting all getting through all these rallies. Let's rally with state senator. Let's do state. Let's do candidates. Let's. Okay, these are all incumbents. Watch the presidential debates. Let's prioritize. Same thing here. Presidential debate. I'm honored to have been selected by my party actors and representative. I hope. I represent them well. I'll also look forward to having a civil discussion with my esteemed opponent about how we can best represent the interests of the voters. Please support me. That's basically me. Minnesota 10. Um, we have State House candidate 10254. Let's go to the let's just do the candidates. Uh-oh, I already got the stuff he knows. Can't wait to be able to play this game. Remember that you can have COVID and be completely fine the whole time. Yeah, see, that's another thing. Um, and I was really trying to tell my friends about it. Um, that, you know, me and you might have it. And we might be spreading it around because because our immune systems are so high that we're not going to be able to even know that we have it. And then we're spreading it around to someone else. So it's really wonky to sit there and try to minimize how much of this of this um is going to affect every single one of us let's go ahead and watch the presidential election indiana has flipped we are looking at a democratic uh government over the next four years this is going to be a democratic landslide missouri north carolina virginia florida I've all flipped over to the democratic column new hampshire and maine have also done that too minnesota staying blue um 345 349 arizona stays red alaska stays red um colorado is blue 368 to 170 i believe that's actually more of a um similar uh number that we actually saw in the uh 2016 no 2000 well yeah 2016 totally 20 uh 2008 election is that what i'm trying to say that's Obama plus Missouri. Yes. Yeah, that's what I was basically looking at. Um, yeah, M Missouri was actually very, very even closer. Um, let's see the exit polls for Minnesota. We had 54 to 45. Democrats were able to hold on to Minnesota. Yeah, this, li this map is literally Obama uh with the addition of missouri that's actually really funny this is the first time uh in 2008 there was the first time that virginia actually uh voted blue and 53 to 47 alonzo dominguez has represented has gone on to represent the state of minnesota in the senate elmer griffith will be our congressional representative Democrats gain 20 seats nationwide. Um, it's a very small amount. California 10, 25, Florida 26, Illinois 12, <coughs> Illinois 16, Kansas th Kansas 3 is always the one that's kind of like flipping all over the place. Uh, yeah, Virginia had not voted blue since 1964 until 2008. Johnson landslide was the last time until Obama came around and flipped it. It hasn't really looked back since. Uh, but Kansas, Kansas 3 is always usually the one that's actually kind of flipping around all the time. 
Obama really exploded the map. Uh, Michigan 8, Michigan 11, that one is the one that we played out of. Emily Oliver will be representing this, uh, District 11. Uh, Minnesota 2 flipped to the Republicans. Oh, nice. That's interesting. So the Republicans gained 7 seats nationwide. The Democrats gained 27, and then that's a total net gain of 20. Republicans actually got Minis the Minnesota delegation on hand. That was actually pretty interesting. Let me... So Minnesota... Three... So Minnesota 2... 3, 6, 8... All flipped to the Republicans. So there was not a single Democratic gain in the state of Minnesota. There was all Republican gains. It's very interesting. Were there any other Republican gains? Virginia 5 flipped to the Republicans. That was it. When you look at the seats gained and lost for the Senate, it will only show the ones that for that election. West Virginia didn't vote for Reagan. Did West Virginia not vote for Reagan? Let me look. In the, in the 1980 election prop. Yeah, okay, so they chose... West Virginia chose uh, um, Reagan... Or chose uh, Carter over Reagan. This was actually kind of like a three-way election. If I can actually get this on here. Um, yeah, it was uh, here, 489, 49, and then 0. This guy actually got a lot of votes. West Virginia. No, that's Pennsylvania. West Virginia. Right here. 367 to 462. But then in 1984, Reagan won it by about nearly another 100,000 votes. Yeah, I was so confused. I was just like, okay, West Virginia? Are you sure, Chief? Are you very sure? Sure you're not going places? Um, West Virginia was also counted on blue war for a while, and Bush is flipping it. Won him the White House as Gore is screwed it. Interesting. Alright, let's check the Senate real quick. Neither party gained seats in the 2024 Senate general elections. All of these states were the ones that were up for, for election, the ones that are colored. Um, these are, don't know, class three election? No, cro class three is like all of these states. Um, hmm. I don't really know how to tell just by looking at a map. Here's the revenue and the expenditure. It's kind of like going up and down. We have a $40 million uh, surplus. I'm looking at the city again. Okay. $2 billion surplus for the state of Minnesota. $20 billion to $18 billion. Uh, Perot still got zero electoral votes. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, my revenue has actually been increasing steadily. There were like big like changes into the revenue code. Uh, what can we do over here? Let's go to... I'm going to change primary education funding once I actually get the budget on my hands. Let's go ahead and institute universal preschool. Let's try to get that passed. 14 to 9. And the Senate refused to grant it a hearing. Oh, um, election, state, state senate, what did we do? Democrats only gained one seat in the senate. Damn it. And the, what? Republicans gained 36 seats statewide. Are you serious? Are you serious? Come on. I did not know that, that Minnesota could be so Republican. This is so interesting. Pass the bill for increased homeless shelters. Minis oh, how did Minnesota 24 go? Yeah, thank you for reminding me, Jake. Shout out to you. Minnesota 4. 24 Republicans won at 66.4 to 33.6. 
So that was probably a lost cause. And when, let's see, they're looking at history right now. Have they ever been able to... Okay, so Minnesota 24 is actually pretty, pretty conservative. Like, that's just not an area that Democrats are even able to win. Put more money into housing budget and road, road improvements. Yep, that is probably going to be the plan. Poverty. Homeless shelters. Let's go public housing. 80 and 70. Those are usually offset by federal federal money. Um, energy assistance. No. So you said put more money in. Must be one of those proper clothes with all the rich Republicans in the suburbs. Pass a bill for increased homeless shelters. Okay, we already have homeless shelters. It's $95 million going into it. Medicaid and Medicaid expansion. Um, I do not... It looks like federal Medicaid is actually not a thing, so we're able to increase and decrease the benefits as we show choose. Let's go ahead and um, make a better Medicaid program. Let's expand a little bit of Medicaid. Eligibility rate is 95% while eligibility rate for children is 280%. Uh, we have like another $2 billion that we can play with, so let's increase the eligibility rate to 100% and then increase the benefits to 12000 It's actually only a couple hundred million dollars that's actually changing. It's uh, That was only an increase of $244 million. An increase of 17,600 people um, will get access to Medicaid. So let's increase this to... 120%. It's an increase of 88,000. So let's go ahead and introduce that. Try to get that done by the end of the year. If you haven't already, make a sales tax. Sales tax. Already do have a sales tax, and that's six and a half percent. Tax reform bill. Let's see what kind of money we're making. Eighteen billion dollars. We're making eleven billion off of our income tax. One point four billion off of uh, corporate, and then six two point two billion off of uh, sales. What's the deficit gain of the state's money? Um, are you talking about the surplus or deficit? You're talking about surplus. Grants to city police departments. Uh, does the federal government actually have something like that? Let's see. Police and corrections. Grants to city police departments. They do not. Damn it. Medicaid. Medicaid expansion is false. No universal health care on a federal level. I cannot wait for city... Um, or uh, state uh, universal health care programs because that's that's gonna be really fun we have 17 people watching and again everyone everyone watching this right now go ahead and leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new um, since everyone is watching right now please go ahead and join my discord um, I'm going to post a link in this in the uh, chat um, so everyone go ahead and join in on that discord and then join my community if you are also interested in supporting me financially You guys can go to my patreon and you can support the agrarian party um, Which is my version of my patreon um, over there I am definitely going to be expanding the agrarian party very soon once I get enough uh, patrons um, But I'm gonna be doing it anyway So if you want to be a part of that growing process then please go ahead and join my patreon You can only join for as little as a dollar a month um, up to about $50 a month right now, um, which is my uh, highest tier if you uh, really wanted to become the commissar of the agrarian party It's the total gain the total loss um, Metrics state budget This is here's here's the um, Treasury funds right now Who disliked it and I will find them and murder them. Okay, that's nice. 
Um, I can actually um, get unemployment, reform some unemployment insurance. Let's go over here. Ah, this is probably not going to be able to get passed until... Um, yeah, I said surplus. I said surplus. Quite sadly, I'll probably test positive since I have came in contact with my grandpa many, 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 many times just days before he tested positive. Yikes. Uh, unemployment tax. Let's go ahead and reform that. Then we here's our tax revenue and expenditure, and then the difference um, goes toward the unemployment fund. So let's... Unemployment tax limit. Let's do $13,000. And then do this at 6000 So that's going to be a $200 million expansion. And that hor did horrible in the committee. Only two people voted for it. We should make Medicare availability 300% of the poverty rate. Yeah, I am very sorry <clears throat> to hear about that, Nox. And I'm really sorry to um, that you're going through that. I actually have thought about it and that if I ever do actually test positive for the coronavirus, I'm going to document it on this channel. So if you guys actually do see that, like, I mean, I think I'm going to be able to be going through it if, if I'm just, you know, I'm quarantining. If the, the symptoms aren't that bad, um, you would be seeing me here, you know, um, talking about my symptoms. I'll be talking about it, you know, trying to stream to you guys, telling you about it, um, what, what I'm going through. Um, so if, um, Nox, if you actually want, like, during my live streams or, like, even on my Discord, I mean, you can talk about it, um, if you need to. <clears throat> Gun licenses, handguns, uh, legal possession is true. Do we have poverty, health, crime? Legal possession. Huh, there's no um, cannabis tax. Interesting. You'll be fine, I promise you, Knox. You won't know whether it'll help or hurt you. Um, drug courts, yes. Drug courts, drug courts. I really like to get city police grants through. That's only $188 million. Let's health. Drug courts. So those are already instituted in the state. For lo this is a grants to city, to the cities, so they can uh, they can institute it. Universal preschool, need based preschool. Two hundred ninety percent of the poverty level. Let's do three hundred percent. Try to do the highest that I can go. I passed the committee, passed the Senate, and the Senate passed it. A Republican-controlled Senate passed my bill. Republican-controlled, well, actually, we still have a control over the House, so we're going to be dealing with, um, let's go ahead and support. That was right at the end of the year, so we were able to sign in one more law just before the year came to a close. So that will go into effect in this next year. All right, state law is going to effect. We have an increase in foster care funding from 91 to 92%. Alcohol tax goes up not 45 cents to $1. Vehicle registration tax goes up by $2. Programs for low-income children, 290% uh, of the poverty level to 300%. Um, hey, what's going on, DJ Cool? Welcome to the live stream. Everyone watching right now, go ahead and leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Again, go ahead and join in on this Discord. Go support me on Patreon if you guys have not. And join the Agrarian Party as the Agrarian Party grows over these next couple of days. We're, um, or weeks, actually. Um, so if you guys can, that will be very much appreciated if you guys can go support me. Um, and then uh, Super Chats are also... Um, available to on this uh live stream so if you guys actually can super chatting um is just a one-time thing that you can actually do um and you do get shout outs um and a lot more whenever you do that 
Uh, current graduation students is 90.5%. This is 3.8% above the national average. The graduation rate has decreased by 0%. Health and Human Resources. 91% of state residents have an access to health care. That's a lot. It's the highest I've ever seen it. Medicaid provides health coverage to approximately 689,000 state residents or 12% of the population at a cost of $3.9 billion. Last year's the use of Medicaid has decreased by 16,000 individuals or 0.3% of the population. Oh yeah, protege slots. Let's go ahead and get those through. Um, Director of Transportation. 100% of roads are in good condition. Roughly 39% of roads experience some congestion reducing traffic flow. Director of Communication or Corrections houses 32,000 inmates at a cost of $729,000 million. dollars. We have three programs decide, um, designed to reduce recidivism, um, and you might consider increasing the number of those programs offered by the state prison system. And in housing, 100%, we have 9,692 homeless individuals. 100% of those have some access to some form of homeless shelter, and then homelessness has decreased by 2% in the last year. Public housing programs currently provide assistance to approximately 283,000 families. We calculate that this helps reduce the poverty effect by roughly 2.1%. So that's something we are going to protect. And let's go on to creating this state budget. We have 912 million dollars that we are able to play with in this budget um, and then if we need more let's go ahead and increase this to 50 55 that's dedicated tax revenue so that's only going to be going toward well actually yeah i guess it does go to the state Well, there's actually no third parties, um, if they added more political parties like Greens and Libertarians. I don't get how making the budget really works in this game. Well, basically, the, the way creating this budget works, um, you go through, you know, you have your money, um, you have uh, general tax revenue and then dedicated tax revenue. General is basically the amount of funds that the state can actually use toward um, the funding of state programs, toward discretionary um, spending programs. This is money that is dedicated toward only one program, and I believe that's like, a, like this is coming from a, this entire 1.6 billion dollars is coming from the unemployment fund, and that's only going toward the unemployment uh, trust fund right here. And then you have three different trust funds that you can play with. Healthcare isn't a thing yet. I haven't really been able to find something to play with on that. State road trust fund, that's going to be like um, this gasoline tax, as well as the wheel tax that actually go toward um, this. And then bit those two siphon money into the state road trust fund. And then whenever, um, you know, this road construction and road maintenance, whenever those um, spendings are lower than the amount that is going to the unemployment or going to the state road trust fund that basically um yeah universal health care is where the health health trust fund is but the state doesn't have a state level universal program yet um but yeah so those so these two the the if the spending is lower on these two then the money that's going into the state road trust fund then that becomes that has money that goes into here and then so things that so like a certain amount of this is allocated toward this and yeah so basically whenever you go into a budget you come over here um some you know programs have uh federal contributions and state contributions if you're on the city level so if you want you know foster care um and you want to affect the amount that the city or state spends on it um, the federal government is going to be covering a certain amount, the state is going to be covering a certain amount, and that goes into the total expenditure. And then so if I go over here, um, you have things like state budget police. You have all this money that's going into it, and then so you have a total budget request. This is how much money that the, that the agency, the state police agency, is asking for from your budget. 
This is the last budget that um, how much money they got in the last year. So total expenditure is uh, $188 million. They need $256 million. So we're going to increase that to $250, $260 million, actually. I'm going to give them $4 million extra for what they need. And then in budgets, you can also attach the um, you know funding levels. So if I want to institute city police grants, then I can make it true, and then I can f affect the amount of money that I'm actually spending on it. So what I really, really want to do in this budget right here is we're going to mess with education. So then um, another thing, you have mandatory expenditures and you have discretionary expenditures. Mandatory expenditures are things that whenever you pass them, like universal preschool, preschool programs for low-income children, a lot of these welfare programs um, and poverty level programs, they are mandatory, which mandated by law, they need to be funded. They, You have no other choice but to fund them. You cannot uh, mess with them. You can only mess with uh, their eligibility. On how on who is actually eligible to get those grants um, so then discretionary is basically at the at the uh, discretion of the legislature so I have grants for tutor funding which actually that could be a good idea um, and then so I so like a uh, state funding the local education because I have the option whether I do want to fund or fu fund um, state education. Like basically, this means that I can cut off state funding and only goes out. It only um, the localities are going to be able to. Um, the localities are the ones that are going to be able to uh, fund themselves. So it's basically abolishing the state or federal department of education. Um, which is a really cool thing. So this actually is a really cool option. I mean, you know, if you don't want to spend money, spend $5.6 billion on uh, on state funding of local education, um, then you can get rid of it. That gives you a lot of money that you can play with. Oh, yikes. So that was six. I'm going to go for 6,500. Let's go for 6300 The creator should add some type of foreign policy or war aspect into the game. Getting an office isn't really interesting as running is. Yeah. Um, okay, what I wanted to do, we are going to drop a little bit of money from local education. We're going to do that to 6000 And then we're going to put this state and university college funding... We're going to increase that to, let's see if I can do 2 billion. Now let's, let's do 1.6 billion. It's going to leave us $810 million. Okay, 1.7. 1, 1. And then let's go over to, where is it? Health and Human Services. We've got local. Education taxes, where is some of my poverty programs? Housing, here it is. Permanent housing. So finalized budget request, $16 million. Emergency homeless shelters For whatever reason it's not letting me Increase that that's odd Fun so we have energy assistance programs, let's do 20 let's do 30 million 200 and let's do 300 million Let's go ahead and give a little bit of money to this. Finalized budget request is 16 million. But then only 64,000 is going to be able to. So let's do 10 million. 
permanent housing programs and emergency homeless shelters. I don't know how to get more money into that. That's in, that's interesting. Eligibility rate if increased might be able to increase the other ones. Oh, that's probably it. Okay, so let's go to state road construction. Let's get $500 million toward that. Let's go ahead and submit that budget. It only introduced one bill and has been rejected by the committee 0 to 23. That's... Was, I think that was... I don't think that was Medicare. 0 to 23 HR1. That was the vehicle registration tax. So people really don't want to increase that. So I guess I just have to leave it alone. Giving people education tends to help them out of poverty, which is neat. Yep. That's actually one of the cool things about this. HR3, what are you? Public housing decreases the eligibility rates. Has passed the committee 30, 13 to 10. It will now be sent to the full chamber for an amendment and a vote. Let's watch to see what that bill does. This is the gas tax? Yikes, that's a lot of numbers. HR3. The bill has come at has it passed okay so it passed the state house 73 to 61 i'm gonna have to veto something like this because the republicans are in control of both houses yeah it made it to the desk it made it to my desk interesting eligibility rate 80 percent to 74.4 percent i'm gonna oppose and they did not have the votes to overturn it so yeah make the legislation on school grants Legislation, education, low-income school grants. Let's increase the benefits. Let's increase that to about 1,200. Okay, how about 15? 1,500. Increases our academic improvement. It's an increase of $89 million. And then some of this expenditure may be offset by grants from the federal government. Pass the committee, 16 to 7. Uh, we have another thing on my desk. This is provides grants and scholarships to low-income students. This decreases the eligibility rate. How was this passed? 68 to 66, very close margins. 37 to 30. Um, provide college grants to approximately 8,640 students at a cost of $266 million. This will decrease the number of grants by 1,700 and decrease the expenditure by $53 million. But I'm going to go ahead and oppose that because I do not want that to become law. Uh, we have politicians, state, state, house. 69 to 65 is the total uh, state house uh 51% to 49%. Um, state Senate, 36 to 31. Republicans are in control of both houses of, of the legislature. The homeless tend to be the ones who really mess up your poverty um, IME. So giving them education and job training might help more than covering programs. Sorry for asking again, but what type of Democrat are you role-playing in this playthrough? What type of Democrat are you playing as PG? Um, let's go over here. Let's... Do history, mayor of St. Paul. Policy. Um, I am a liberal on both ends. Uh, he opposes universal health care. Maintain the military spending levels. Um, you know, kind of offset on the environmental programs. Um, supports getting rid of the income gap. Supports gay marriage and uh, government benefits to gay people. Uh, supports illegal marijuana. Opposed to making abortions illegal. Pro-choice. Um, supports free community college, free preschool, and as well as increasing the salaries for everyone. No, I didn't. I totally didn't even see you asking. Um, 
So I was actually kind of like, oh, I didn't even see that. Um, everyone watching right now, again, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Please go ahead and do that and support me on Patreon again if you are able to. Uh, super chats, super chats are again always appreciated, I and mean, they really, really help me out. Eight. It's been rejected by the state senate. Damn it. I'm running against an incumbent Democrat for Senate in the liberal Virginia. Nice. Interesting. Uh, road trust fund is negative 560 million. Um, hey, shy guy, thank you so much for subscribing to me. And again, if you have not, <clears throat> if you have not done so and you are new to this channel, please subscribe. Subscribing to my channel really, really helps me out. Um, let me actually see if I can get my... Um, subscriber count because I am very close I am about um, 115 subscribers away to 3,000 so we are now in um, the race to 3,000 subscribers if you guys can actually help me get to 3,000 subscribers in the next few days I'm really um, I'm gonna try to do something really special for you guys. So this is gonna be kind of like an opportunity. So if you guys can actually share my channel, um, somehow get people to start su subscribing to me. Um, that was a weird, yeah, that is a really weird day, JJ. Please don't ever play as someone like that. Libertarian Demer, ugh, ugh, God, that's scary. Um, I've never even been able to actually get Libertarian status on here. That's a bug. That's a that's a good bug right there. If someone wants to screenshot this and send it over to the developer, that's a that's kind of scary. What's the population? Five million. Okay, so that didn't mess up the population of uh, Minnesota, but yikes! That's a big yikes right there. Where was that at? That was in health. Um, nice. Yo, I have a question. How do I increase per capita? Uh, lowering taxes. Lowering taxes always uh, usually um, gets um, to that point, I believe. Um, because, you know, lowering taxes, you know, they're making more money, so they're able to, you know, spend more. Um, so that's how I believe. We have 517,000 people with no health coverage in the state. Make legislation that helps the economy, healthcare quality, health coverage type. Use of Medicaid is going down, but the use of Medicare is going up. But then private is kind of like flattened out at 65%. Overview, economy, our economy is doing better. Um... Government approval rating is kind of going up. I'm playing as a Republican right now, and I don't know if I should vote yes or no for a budget amendments because I really don't know what they do. Any tips? Um, and that basically means whenever you're looking at a bu budget amendment, um, whatever kind of program, if so, like, let's say that, um, you know, poverty is too high, and I want to fight poverty. I want to fight the pro poverty effect. So... You're going to go in and then you're going to support the programs that are basically going to like in housing or something like that. Try to get something passed to where, um, you know, you are going to be able to make a change. So if there's something that you want to do or, you know, you just want to give like I kind of read through it and I read through all the programs or if I know there's a program I want to start funding like remediation programs, alternative uh, and education adult education, education for non-English speakers, state board of education, office of the superintendent. You're giving money to all of these programs that you're looking at, tax administration, executive, judicial, legislative branches of government. Um, 
Department of Homeland Security, Natural Resources, State Museums and Historical Sites. So it's kind of something if, you know, you're going to fund what you want. Sebastian, I have, uh, welcome to the live stream, Sebastian. Um, I'm from Argentina, I don't understand what Medicaid is. Um, if you could just explain briefly what it is, that would be grateful. Medicaid is basically um, a federal program by the United States government. Um, um, I'm actually going to pull it up and I'm going to show it on screen for you. Um, Medicaid in the United States is basically a federal program, federal and state program, that is actually um, is supposed to help people out with um, health care costs. So if you're making below a certain amount of money, um, then the federal or state government um, would actually is actually there to help you. Um, so basically, it says um, the federal and state program that helps with medical costs for some people with limited income and resources. Medicaid also offers benefits not normally covered by Medicare, um, which Medicare is a national health insurance program in the United States under the Social, Social Security Administration. Um, and then provide primarily provides health insurance for Americans age 65 and older. So Medicare is for older people. Medicaid is for people with uh, you know limited not, limited income and resources. So it's a very interesting program um, that you know has a lot of um, things that go into it. Um, and it's it every election cycle you always hear about Medicare, Medicaid. Um, it's something that, you know, politicians are able to look at and say, we're not going to touch this. We are going to touch it whenever we get into the office, but I'm not going to tell you that. Um, so that, that, that's basically what Medicaid, Medicaid is, Medicare and Medicaid is. Um, we have 17 people watching this stream right now. Go ahead and everyone leave a like on this, on this, uh, stream if you can. Um, I really, really do appreciate it. Super chats are always appreciated and going to my Patreon, supporting the Agrarian Party on Patreon is my goal for the next few, for the next at least month, I believe. Um, so if you guys are interested in supporting the Agrarian Party, please go support me on Patreon. It is just politics gaming. Uh, Minist Department of Employment Services. Employment insurance is $1.07 billion. And then also, I mean, you know, you give money, more money to state prisons. Um, something in the budget, if you actually don't have a universal, uh, if you don't have a free community college, um, increase your relationship with the Republicans. I have a no Republican base. I just have the progressive Democrats under my control. Not even the moderate Democratic coalition or the conservative Democrats are on my side. So the progressive Democrats are the only ones that are actually supporting me. Where I'm trying to pass crime bills, but the Republicans keep blocking. So my party, so I changed my party so I can fund the Democrats so that they can gain the House and the Senate. Huh. Funding for local schools, that's the state share of primary education. Community health centers, 12 million. Local health care, 6 million. Caring for elderly via things like Social Security, Medicare, and like, um, and the like works very poorly when one has an aging population. Yes, that is very, very true. Let's go to population. 48 to 46 and then 5. 62 million Americans on, um that are aged, that are seniors, considered seniors. 208 million people that are adults. We have another 71 million uh, younger people under the age of 16 or 18. 58% of everyone is uh, registered voters. And registered. Okay, so we have 167 million Democrats, 157 million Republicans, 17 million undecided voters and then uh like you know here's the number that are actually like <laughs> that are actually registered to vote how do i see a map the state house and senate elections you basically go to over here you go to state and then you go to other elections and then it shows you sometimes it's going to show you a map when, statewide it's not going to show you a map 
federally, it's going to show you a map. So house, this is a house map. Uh, Iowa is actually blue while Minnesota is red. Senate over here, then this is what you're looking at. See the news just going on. Uh, looks like we don't have any laws, so let's go ahead and try to see if we can get a law in. Um, what are we looking at? I'm gonna wait for introducing a tax bill until the budget appropriations process is done. Get pull up, get proteges and etc. Now he should go into the U.S. legislature first. Wait, after your second term, any chance of you running for president? Um, I would rather run for Senate, actually. Yeah, um, I've had five terms, and now I'm going for my sixth. Or what? Are you, what? What are you? What is your position? Like, what are you running for? I'm literally waiting for the Democrats to gain the Senate and the House. Interesting. Legislation, unemployment tax, federal revenues from this tax are used to help to administrate state um, state unemployment programs. See, that's the interesting thing. That's the reason why I love this game so much is because. Um, the game is so interconnected in which, like, you know, okay, so the state has its own unemployment program, basically, unemployment insurance program, which, uh, provides individuals with the source of revenue while they look for new employment. So basically, you know, it's the same thing where, you know, you get money from the state and then they help you, like, they help you out until you get another job. Benefits are temporary and individuals receiving benefits must actively seek employment. Which is usually for, through like workforce programs. They're like kind of like you know finding um, a job um, with the state program that they actually have. Um, is there a game? There's a game called Politics and War you should check out. Um, yeah, sure, I could actually do that. Um, I'll look into it in a minute. The program is funded through an unemployment payroll tax, so you know you know you have your thing, and then so basically the difference. So like as I showed you guys a minute ago, we go over to the state budget. And then so this is how much the unemployment tax is getting off of the unemployed. This is how much they're spending on the unemployed. And then the difference right here is going into the f actual fund value. So this is the positive no um, number that is directly going into this every year. And then so this amount of money is going to be there that you know it's money that the state actually has to give out to the unemployed so that's whenever you're seeing things like dedicated revenue because the dedicated revenue from the unemployment fund is only going into the unemployment and it is this has been trickling up for the past couple of years uh road trust fund we don't have one treasury fund has actually been going up we have been able to manage that and we have a very high um surplus uh what is going on general neville welcome to the live stream uh thank you so much for joining broken forever you're amazing man please respond to me hey <clears throat> shout out to you i've actually never seen you in here um if you if you have actually never you know never commented I'm, I, I i sometimes i can actually recognize pe people that comment that are on my streams so sometimes i do see new people around here so if you are new i do not mind you talking you should definitely talk in the stream i really want to see who is subscribed to me who um enjoys my content so if you're there like like shout out to you please go ahead and you know be active i really like to see you guys like talk um but yeah uh <clears throat> broken forever that's also me i'm very broken thank you i'm on your side with that um but yeah thank you so much for that comment i really appreciate that uh, medicaid spending for medicaid has actually been going down it's actually nearly at five billion dollars and now we're at about we're under three billion or four billion so over time medicaid has actually been um the spending on that has actually been going down 27% is going toward funding for local schools. Okay, 40% is going toward education. 24% is going toward healthcare. 9% is going toward human services. 7% is going toward roads. And then 
7.9% of government spending is going toward government spending, literally. What the hell are we spending on? So th that's on general government operations. I want to know what the hell is so high. $1.7 billion on administration? What in the god? Construction and maintenance of facilities. Judicial branch is taking up at 1% of our spending. I've never been on your stream, but I love watching a lot of your geopolitical simulator content because you know what you're doing. Keep it up, man. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate that. Shout out to Broken Forever because that is also me. I am also broken. Please help me. This is not a joke. Um, but yeah, State Library is $3.9 million. Definitely need to cut that. Um, administration costs. See, I mean, you know, you're spending money on the administrative costs of that, and it's just trickling up. It just keeps going up. Unemployment insurance has kind of been all wonky all over the place. Can you get bankrupt if you have a big deficit? That I do not know of. I've never gone bankrupt before. Um, which usually, I mean, the budget is kind of set. You know, it has to go through, and then the budget is kind of like, you know, supposed to not really bankrupt you, but if you do a certain amount of things, you know, every every uh, every year then possibly i don't know let's go over here crime let's um let's go to profile stats 72% of my legislation is able to get passed, so I've written 32 pieces of legislation, 23 of those have actually been able to get passed. Let's see what I can change with the unemployment. No, not that. Medicaid itself, let's see if we can do something. 95%. So it didn't change from the last time. Poverty, education for the unemployed. Let's go ahead and do that. Education for unemployed. Got out, that got out of the uh, committee. Got out of the Senate committee. So it passed both houses. Interesting. 104 to 30, and then 52 to 15. We had a lot of Republican support on those bills. About 75% of the persist Participants receive a diploma from this program, and then this will provide high school equivalency training to roughly 6,000 individuals at only a cost of $4.5 million. Let's go ahead and sign that into law. And education, academic grants, low income school districts. When are you going to start playing Geopolitical Simulator again? Um, what are the ways to earn political points? Um, that's basically voting along lo along lines with uh, your your um, with your uh, people, like whatever caucus you're a part of. Like you vote in line with that with what they like. Um, if you want, oh, the moderate Republican caucus is actually on my side now. Interesting. 32,000. If we were to run for federal house rankings, okay, so we wouldn't, 32,000, so we would automatically become the majority leader if we were to run for a house. Senate, on the other hand, I highly doubt. Yeah, because the people in the Senate have way more political experience. So they have extremely high um, political point thresholds to actually, like, be considered, like, relevant in the Senate. The House, on the other hand, like, you're able to get become Speaker of the House, like, very easily. Um, you know, with this, this many political points. Let's check departments. Let's check... Department of Justice, 119,000 drug crimes, um, and then, not the Secretary of Defense, Human Services, 
So we have 62 million people on Medicare, 34 million on Medicaid, and then 190 million on uh, private insurance. Um, Medicaid is providing to 34 million people, low income individuals, or 10% of the population. The federal share for Medicaid is $222 million billion. And then Medicare is providing care to 62 million individuals, or 18% of the population, at a cost of $839 billion. Access to Medicare has increased by 1.6 million people. Then you know we have TANF as well. Um, I was really looking for... Department of Education, there we are. Low income school grants, only the only money that uh, the federal government is actually giving anyone is uh, low income school grants. So I believe actually the, the state of Minnesota actually does have something for that. And we are actually, I believe, we are splitting that cost with the federal government. Let's see, academic, that's academic achievement, low income school grants. Yep, we do have that. So we are splitting that cost with the federal government. Let's do 125, 120 actually. And then let's do $1,000 per low income student. Student. I highly doubt that's gonna get passed. 16 to seven. Um, 104 to 30, bipartisan support. Oh, it's actually, Governor, did I sign it in the law? Okay, here we are. All right, looks like we are actually going to be able to get this past the Senate. So basically, a way to get political points, actually, if you are, um, if you want to know how, you have these um, press conferences and like you know party messages. So basically, however they're telling you to vote on it, that's how you actually get your relationship up with them. Um, so if you do the opposite of what they want, because I'm you know I want to get this passed, we're gonna go ahead and support that. Um, you know, they think a certain way, but they're only voting um, the way I want them to is because I have, you know, them in my grasp. So, oh, I, I actually lost the modern Republican caucus. Oh, my God. See, so it changes every now and then. So now if I try to introduce something, I'm not going to be able to get a pass because the Republicans don't like me anymore. Which, ah, damn, I should have... Let me see if I can try to get this passed again. Yeah, see? Didn't even give it, give it the chance to get a hearing. Have you ever thought about playing Democracy 3? I love that game and I'd love to see a playthrough. It's a great, thing, great game if you like. I haven't, but it's kind of something that I just haven't. Um, 63%. Um, I, I have it. It's just like, you know, I tried to play it a couple of times, but I mean, I just didn't, s I, I wasn't seem seemingly interested, I guess. I don't really know how to explain it. Like, I like this game so much better, like, you know, compared to Democracy, this is, this is the format that I have strived for. And Democracy 3 just kind of doesn't hit the mark on, like this game does. So... Okay, we have Senator Rodney Bland will not seek re-election. If I run in this election, you have a really good chance of winning. It's kind of boring. It only focuses on policies and stuff. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Okay, so we are looking at a gubernatorial election 
this year. So should I run for another term as governor? Because there's still a lot of stuff that I haven't been able to get past. I still um, have not been able to get universal preschool passed. I still am trying to work on this economy. I, it is not satisfactory, in my opinion. If you guys want me to, I should actually... Um, I could run for Senate. Or I could just wait until my next term is up. Run for Run for governor again. Um, yeah, don't move positions too fast. That's, uh, that's what I don't like to do. I don't like to move positions that fast. Um, so, I could actually run for governor again, which is what I really want to do, but I also wanted some suggestions from you guys. Taxation is going down. It's always going to be going down. Healthcare cover uh, approval is up. Department effectiveness... See, I mean, these numbers could be way better. You know what? Yep, I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with the governorship. I'm gonna run for re-election as governor. Uh, 52, director of education, state laws, high school equivalency programs for unemployed, education grants for low-income communities. Those are the only state laws that actually were passed in the last year. We need better better education rates. Yep, yep, yep. That's what you guys are. You're my cabinet. Are there any limits to the amount of terms? Um, with AI, yes. With players, no. So I can. So I. So the presidency of the United States actually has a like a term limit. Term limit of two terms. Um, but the um, the game basically kind of ignores that, and then allows you to run as many terms as you want. Like California has a term limit of ter term limit of two terms. And the game even tells you that they're running on their term limit. Um, but the game doesn't put a restriction on you. Just like it allows you to become the president before the age of 35. I call Secretary of State. Yep. <laughs> also remember, yeah, pro protege slots. Yeah, see, let's go ahead and get a couple of proteges in. Um, State Senate District 38. Oh, look at that. He was actually competitive in that district, but he wasn't able to actually win. Interesting. These are city council, state senate. What does attending the parades do in game? Nothing really yet. It's kind of like a test because I actually asked the creator of this game what he actually did. Um, what he actually wants to do. And basically, um, he's kind of pra making a practice for, um, you know, future events that are actually going to have a um a um effect on you let's go ahead and try to get some state senate districts um up let's go for district 17 state house let's do some in a really really close districts It's been about five months without any big updates. Yeah, I cannot wait. I cannot wait. District 102, let's go ahead and get that through. I'm gonna run a really young guy there. Um, State Senate. Protege, let's go for District 49. I'm not really looking at the um differences right now i'm really just trying to get the ones that are really close and then get my people in there parades give you a little more recognition of it than a max all right let's go ahead and go through and then let's create this next budget and then we'll concentrate on concentrate on our re-election campaign what do they even do? They basically, they um, ensure that you're actually, yeah, they run with the exact same platform as you do. And then they're supposed to, you know, get, um, like, you know, if you have, like, the situation that I do. I mean, I have um, a house that isn't in my favor. You know, 36 Republicans and 31 Democrats 
uh, 69 Republicans and 65 Democrats in the House. So it's kind of an, also a way for you to kind of change the balance of the uh, of the state legislature. And then, I mean, if you're in a city council district, then you can have them run in other districts just to kind of like change the lay change the layout. Director here, yes, twenty two thousand inmates at a cost of seven hundred twenty one million bucks. Then ninety nine percent homelessness has decreased by one percent. Then public housing programs are still in effect. Let's go ahead and create the state budget and then run for governor. Yeah, it, the proteges aren't useless. Um, I just don't utilize them because it's kind of horrible for me to multitask. <laughs> Let's increase the percent of state government funding of foster care to 95%. Um, funding for social service programs. Let's increase that to $200 million. Mental health services, let's go ahead and increase that to $170 million. Give about $15 million to uh, addiction services. Immunization, let's go ahead and get that at about $12 million. Maternal and health child needs, 15 Let's increase $10 million to local health care. Tobacco use prevention and cessation programs for 10, well, that's state medical facilities. Let's increase to 200. So I've, I've spent about 200 million. How often are you required to put together a budget? Every year. You were, or you were, uh, you're not required to do it. You could literally press this button right here. Or just if you have a deficit, then just uh, um, if you have a surplus, then you don't even have to mess with it if you really, really want to. I like to mess with it because I really, really enjoy making the budget and I like to kind of, you know, um, allocate resources um, every which place every year. So it's really fun for me. I really like making budgets. State prison budget. Health and health care. Um... Education, let's go ahead and give another $200 million to state and university college funding. And then basically, one of the cool things about this budget right here is it makes tuition rates lower, which means more students are going to be able to attend college. So instead of, uh, you know, making community college free if you're not able to get that passed then you're able to you know like school improvement grants like you're able to do all these things that actually affect the game itself you're you're affecting the the um amount of people that are going to college if you don't have a community if a f you know a federal Community college program isn't in place or a state community college program isn't in place. So you're able to increase money going into state universities and college. And then it says provides funding for state university and colleges. More funding means lower tuition rates, which then means more students are going to be, be able to attend. So I really do enjoy like funding more of this actually now. I might have promised to raise per capita income, but I don't know how at the moment. Lower taxes. You just need to lower taxes. And there's a really cool update um, that's actually probably going to be coming. The next major update is going to be the judicial branch. The judicial branch is going to be the next step in this game. And we are going, I think it's going to be revolutionary. Like we are like, you know, the game that is the way it is right now. And then on top of that, you get to play as the judicial branch, not just the legislative and the executive branches. It's going to be awesome. Let's increase that to what they want. Let's do 270 million and then submit that budget. And then we're going to be running for governor. 
Let's go ahead and re run for re-election. So let's get economic priorities through, increase the minimum wage, uh, universal preschool program, and then poverty. Let's decrease poverty. We got Anoka County and St. Louis County. We got no Republican support off of that. Rallies, fundraising, door knocking, marketing, uh, go to staff, max out staff. And then let's get some volunteers on the field. Let's go ahead and open about 20 field offices. We're just gonna do the phone bank. Then that, and then door knocking. Trying to get 60 and then 2020. There we go. Can you get appointed to the Supreme Court? Not yet. Um, Attorney General and Supreme Court are probably going to be positions in the future. Rallies are really helping out. One hundred twenty percent. This is education grants for low-income communities. How did that pass? Seventy-three to sixty-one, thirty-seven to thirty. Long party lines, basically. Let's oppose. Campaign marketing, economic growth. Let's sink some money into that. That lowered our Republican. Do we have? We don't have a primary opponent, so we can just go through the next couple of weeks and make sure volunteers do stuff and like fundraise and door knock. How does the volunteer tab work? I've never used it. I always use it. Um, basically, it's like running, um, you know, a grassroots campaign. So you, you can get people to know who you are. Eligibility rate to 80%. Let's oppose. Challenges, reduce sales tax, need-based higher education grants, oppose, and we don't have a primary opponent, so we don't really have to do anything except fundraise. So we can do these interviews, try to get our enthusiasm up. And then volunteers, finances, so how much we're making. We got a lot of donations coming in from packs and individuals. Trying to make volunteers fundraise, but they aren't getting any money. Well, what are you running for is the thing. Let's do this, policy support, voter enthusiasm, priorities, policy support, and approval rating. 64, 52, and 47. Paxton Harvey is one of them. So we have 52 and 47. Drake Dupont, Dupont? Gabe Vogel, 60, 51, 51, 63, 41. So we have higher enthusiasm. 73, so it's taxes, economy, and education. So I'm already hitting the mark. Policy. I mean, with the campaign overhead cost, I'm losing the exact amount I'm spending on volunteers. Mm, it's... Uh, well, again, it's... What are you running for? It really, really depends on who you're what position you're running for. And the primaries are up. We obviously are going to win our contest. 
We will be facing off against Drake in this primary or in this general election, but it looks like the numbers are not in his favor. Literally about 900,000 votes cast in a Republican primary, up to 1.3 million in the Democratic primary. What are you running for? State House, fourth, fourth re-election. Do you have a lot of the... Because uh, State House is actually the lowest amount that are being donated. I always usually like have people, you know, um, where I can actually like get money from packs. Let's go ahead and go to the very end of this election period. Let's go ahead and do voter intention. Let's see. 66 to 33. Hopefully it's a little more competitive in this um, delegate events. Three three hundred thousand people that are actually marketing, poverty, minimum wage, taxes. Yikes. Income tax rates, 1.5 million. Okay, that got people to like me. Figured out the problem campaign overhead costs doesn't include what you're getting from fundraising. Yeah, it doesn't. Questionnaire. Go ahead and do those final rallies. Total increase to turnout was 460,000 voters. And this is probably going to be a clean sweep of right again, uh, just like in our last election. There's going to be two uh, very, very landslidey elections. Hopefully we see at least one county being won. But this is an obvious win for us. Yeah, see, 1.1 million votes already cast in the uh, Democrats' favor. Watch whenever our county actually comes in. And 1.5 million. And 2026 elections, what kind of legislature? Democrats gain 36 seats statewide. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We're still dealing with the Republican Senate, but the Democrats have sweeped across the state to gain 36 seats across the state. No, no Republican gains in any district in the state of Minnesota. 36 state seats have been flipped to the Republic to the Democratic uh, Party. That is awesome. Awesome. I really love that. Really might is really going to make the next two years um, a little bit easier us, for us in the House. The Senate is going to be a different story. We're still going to have some trouble doing that. Um, citywide, what are we looking at? Neither party gained seats in the school board. One Republican gained in the school in the city council. And there's still a Democratic mayor in the city of St. Paul. See, President uh guthrie has reached the presidential term limit and will not be seeking re-election however if you are a player then you can actually do that um do you know who you who you will vote for in november um at this rate probably trump um you know this this is going to be a very hard election hopefully you know things aren't set back like the 2020 election. I mean, we're in March. The primary elections are already being held back. Um, the primary elections are already being held back in a couple of states, but you know, right now we're still looking at possibly um, this having an effect on, you know, 
a lot more in the future. Um, so honestly, you know, Trump, I kind of do agree with, you know, what he's been doing and all that. So it's kind of, um, Trump 20, no offense to any of you guys. Yeah. Yeah. See, I'm not crazy about it. You know, I think, you know, I still think he's an idiot sometimes, but then at the same time, you know, I do enjoy his policies. So that's more so like, you know, what I'm looking at, um, in November. None of the Democrats like could even catch my attention. I really don't um, like any of the Democrats. So it's, you know, I, I don't like Joe Biden. I just cannot actually go for Joe Biden. So that's just not something um, the Democrats just don't have a candidate. The only candidate that I actually was interested in was, um, yeah, independents are the ones that are swaying it. Um, the only one that I actually, uh, the only Democrat that I actually could like, um, was Pete Buttigieg, and he dropped out. Thirty-nine percent. So I'm actually getting road congestion zone down. We're gonna go ahead and make this budget, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and think about heading out. City law sales tax goes up by 0.1%, and then uh, federal military benefits uh, decreases eligibility rates to 19 years of service. So that's actually good. Let's go ahead and create the state budget. Medicaid. Oh, it looks like federally they passed Medicaid expansion. So we can't really even mess with this anymore. Benefits cannot be changed in Medicaid expansion is true. So I guess during the budget process I can't mess with it. Medicaid expansion mandates all participating are all participating states provide full Medicaid to anyone who falls within the eligibility rate. Without Medicaid Medicaid expansion, states could limit who receives Medicaid. For instance, a state might limit Medicaid eligibility to children and parents in Medicaid expansion. The federal government agrees to pay 90% of the new expenses resulting from the expansion. Note that Medicaid expansion eligibility rate is relative to the federal poverty line. A value above 100% and receives indicates that individuals above the federal poverty line are also eligible for Medicaid. So that's like, you know, universal Medicaid. Or basically the same thing that everyone can be covered by it so you are increasing it so that everyone is able to get off of it how long do you live in this game um i'm ahead of lpg it's too bad i came in late in the stream but i still enjoyed watching have a good evening and i will see you in the next one neville thank you so much for joining us let's last year's budget was 133 million dollars so let's go for 120 million and then road congestion is what we were looking at so let's put that at 500 million And for those watching right now, go ahead again, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Super chats are always appreciated. I am going to be heading out soon, so if you do want to do a super chat, one quick super chat um, of any amount, that really does appreciate. I really do appreciate that. And uh, if you want to go and join in on my Discord and Patreon, I am going to be um, making a really fun uh, thing between my Patreon and my Discord. So if you guys are interested in that, please go ahead and join up on my Discord and Patreon. Um, let's community planning and development grants. $257 million. Let's go ahead and give them $270 million. Total finalized budget request is $30 million. Let's give them $35 million. Transportation, Bureau of Motor Vehicles, Financial Services, Education, let's go ahead, $890 million, let's give 300 additional million bucks to state university and colleges, so that's going to be $1.6 billion.
And then... Let's go ahead and pass, try to pass a school improvement grant. And then that's going to be $100 million. Out of a budget request of uh, $40 million. This provides grants to help school improve schools that are like, producing low, low, below average results. Some school districts cannot generate enough funding to produce high quality schools. These grants are attempt... These are grants attempt to address the issue by providing additional funding. So that leaves us with $532 million in our budget. Let's go ahead and go. Try to get that passed. 16 to 7. It sucks to have the Democrats have power in the Senate. Literally anything I try to get passed, they shoot it down. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. It's been rejected by the Senate Committee 11 to 12. Damn it. Campaign, elections, politicians, state house. Yeah, look at that difference. This is the, like, the Republicans were in power for a couple of years, actually. Then the Democrats kind of came in, then the Republicans came in, and then now we're in these wide margins. Then the Democrats lost all the power, and now they're gaining it again. So it's actually, you know, very volatile. The Senate has consistently remained Republican interesting like I'm not able to touch that so so yeah um, we're gonna go ahead and end this um, in this uh, live stream right here guys if you guys like this video go ahead and leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new um, I am going to go ahead and post the discord link in the chat so then there's that and then so guys go ahead and join in on that go ahead and leave a like subscribe to the channel if you are new um, if you guys uh, really really want to help me out please go ahead and share this channel so I can get to 3,000 sub subscribers we are very very close to 3,000 and let me go ahead and look at my subscriber count right now so if you guys actually do want to help me out please um, if you can't do patreon um, or anything like that. Super chatting again is always appreciated. Um, but yeah, I have 2,860 subscribers on my channel. So if we can get to 3,000 subscribers by the end of March, I'm going to be, I'm going to like, you know, try to do something for you guys. So I really, really do want to, um, push for that. Um, so yeah, if you guys are interested, just go ahead and get, um, if also roll me in the mods and server. Yeah, sure. I could do that. Um, but yeah, um, Everyone just go ahead and, you know, support me on Patreon, support me on here, uh, go to the Discord and join it, join the Discord, and then uh, share the channel and let's get the 3,000 subscribers. We are going to try, I'm going to try to do something really special for you guys once we hit 3,000, um, so look forward to that. So guys, if you guys like this, go ahead and leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new, and I will see you guys in the next live stream, and I'm going to, you know, I'm gonna, I'm actually going to try to get, you know, get live streams up, um, you know, Every other day, um, I kind of do have the time to do that. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and make the push to 3,000. Maybe if we can even get that in the done in the next couple of days, that will be even better. So yeah, let's get the 3,000. And guys, I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching and take care.